Let's get started with bootstrapping a simple Rails application. Let's install the latest version of Ruby on Rails. I assume you have a recent version of Ruby. In this case, I'm using Ruby 2.1.2. With this, I'm going to type in gem install Rails, and the latest version will be installed right away. Most likely, it will be Rails 4.1. So after this is done, we'll be able to run the Rails new command to bootstrap a new app. OK, Rails 4 is installed. Now we can go ahead and just type in Rails new. I'm going to call it Redis app, just to be simple. We're going to use a Rails application that will resort to Redis. So I'll just stick to this. And after every single file is created, we're going to bundle all of the dependencies that make part of a standard Rails application. Don't worry, we're still going to add in some more after this bundle command is run. OK, so the bundle command is complete. Now we can go straight to that folder by typing in cd redis app. And after that, we can open our editor. I'm going to use vim. And I'm going to start by going to the gem file. These are a lot of comments. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to replace all occurrences of a pound sign at the beginning of the sentence with a space. I'm going to use the normal command to remove all of those lines. There you go. This is a standard gem file. I'm going to add a couple more gems to satisfy our needs. Let's see what different gems I have added. As you know, I like to use Helmel because it's just a lot simpler to interpret and to write. So I'll stick with that. We're also going to use Bootstrap along with Auto Prefixer in order to have Twitter's Bootstrap into the application. We'll use red carpet as well in case we need to edit some markdown content. Then we have the two most important gems in our setup. They are Redis and Redis Rails. This Redis gem is the official Ruby driver for the Redis server. As you know, you need to have a Redis server running and then you will need to have some sort of driver in order to communicate with it. Redis Rails depends on Redis as well but I just wanted to make this specific. The Redis Rails gem contains a lot of different mechanisms that will assist us in some examples later in the course. Then for testing purposes, I'm going to include pry rails, pry bug for debugging, and the herb gem to simplify the way we display our query results. This is a fairly standard gem setup. But there's one extra gem that I want to include. I'm going to put it just below Redis Rails. It is called Sidekick. And this gem will prove very important with background job processing. With this, let's type in the bundle command in order to have all of these new dependencies in the application. After this, we'll be able to start developing the application by providing a set of models and controllers. This seems about right. So now that we have our application set up ready, we can close this and run the Rails as command to boot our Rails server. It will boot a Puma server, and then we can go to the browser. And from there, we can go to localhost, port 3000, and the application will work. We will be presented with the standard Rails application template. From here, we can start generating data which will prove very important in order to assess the performance that Redis will bring us. Jump into the next lesson to see how we can accomplish that.